What's up everybody, it's the Tabletop Tyrant, and today we're going to be covering the Beastmen. Jesus Christ! I warned you! I've done it again! I warned you, but did you listen to me? Oh no, you knew it all, didn't you? Oh, it's just a harmless little bunny. Now, they are a bit different, but I'm also equally excited to see what GW does with them, because the last book they had was 7th edition, and like Bretonia, it shows in their rules. Now, there was one other army book that was also 7th edition, which was the Skaven, but I think it's arguably a book that was written with 8th edition in mind because they stayed fairly powerful. Um, now, however, with that caveat aside, I am slightly familiar with Beastmen, not a pro, but I'm looking forward to breaking down the army with y'all today. So, let's begin. Oh, PowerPoint proficient, I'm back! Bam. All right, let's rock and roll -o. Primal Fury and Beastman Ambush. <laughs> so Primal Fury is a leadership test that you take at the beginning of combat, and if you pass, you get hatred. It doesn't matter if it's round one, round two, round three of that combat, you reroll your fail to hits. Now, if you roll, I believe, double ones, you gain hatred and frenzy, which is really good because it's going to put you in a nice spot with that extra attack. And again, that's just for the round. It's not like permanently. So it is something that can really help you, but also very random. And if it's anything that's random, it tends to not be as good because it's hard to divide a list based off something random for people that want to play competitively. For me, a more narrative player, I enjoyed the rule. I thought it was a lot of fun. Now we got the Beastman Ambush. We pretty much set a unit up in reserves, and what happens is, is that unit comes on, you roll a die. If you roll a one, it enters on your table edge. If you roll a two, two, three, you reroll next turn. You roll a four, it comes on your left side table edge. You roll a five, comes on your right side table edge. You roll a six, you pick the table edge it comes out on. Caveat, however, you have to have a mirrored unit on the tabletop. What's that mean? If you have 40 gores sitting in ambush, you need to also have 40 gores on the table. Now the equipment doesn't matter. You can have one with additional hand weapons and reserves. And you can have sword and board on the table. But you must have the same number mirrored on the table. Now I don't know if you can have 20 in reserves and 40 on the table. It said that you cannot exceed the number that's on the table. So if you have 40, you cannot have 41. It didn't say anything about lowering it. So... I don't know. Beastman players, if you could, let me know. Uh, moving on now. Boom. All right. The Lore of the Wild. They had your signature spell. You could swap out a spell that you didn't like and take that. But, uh, you know, we'll go into a couple of these. I'm not going to dive too heavy into this because now we got an idea of the magic phase. It's going to be useless. However, Savage Dominion was one that I think was the most beneficial out of the lot. And pretty much what you get is it goes off on a 16. The Shaman can summon a Gorgon, a Jabber Scythe, or a Giant. Now, with that being said, the Shaman can no longer cast spells. The Shaman can't attack. The Shaman can't dispel. He's brain locked in with this monster he summoned from the wild. But you place that base contact on any table edge, I believe. Yeah, any table edge. That model is functionally part of your army. So I believe if someone slaughters it or kills it, they get the points. Now, it's a good thing to have because you can pretty much get a free 275 point monster just on the table. And the Jabber Scythe is no joke. However, every time you take a wound, you have to take a toughness check. And if you fail your toughness check, your Shaman takes a wound as well. And there's a good chance that your shaman just dies because if it's a hero choice, they only got two wounds. Now, what happens if your shaman dies? The monster just kind of runs off the tabletop and wanders away. It didn't say much about victory points, if your opponents get them or not. And then, what happens if you say, oh, I don't want the monster anymore? You cannot just randomly say, I don't want it. Once you summon it, you have to die, that monster has to die, or you have to beat the game with that thing still alive before it goes away. So, it cannot be dispelled by your opponent. It can only be killed, or your shaman can be killed. So, I thought that was one of the best spells in it. The rest of these, I'm just going to leave as they are, but these are their spells. Eh, you're better off taking the lore of beasts, in my opinion. 
Uh, all right. Uh, magical items. You got the crown of horn, slug skin. These are all just different gifts of chaos. Now they had something really interesting. Uh, hero choices, lord choices, and also some sergeants. Like I think the bestigors could take gifts of chaos and add them. I think bestigors are up to 25 points. So you could take many limb fiend, which is an unmodified. As treated as user's base strength and cannot be augmented by magic items. So if your base strength four, that so you got an extra appendage grows out and you're just smacking people with it. It doesn't have a weapon attached. So I mean interesting stuff. Again, like Bretonia, we're gonna see a lot of the things that we would see with them. A bunch of treasures of the herdstone. So we got the weapons. Um, again, it's something that it's like it's interesting to reflect on, but now that old world's right around the corner, uh, I'm pretty much just doing this for posterity to see which of these survive it, and then we'll talk about what it did if it made it into the new book or not when the new book drops. For now, just these are the weapons. These are their armor. Uh, I think personally, I always like the, the any type of helmet you can take. It tends to scale with your armor, so this gives you a six up armor save. If you have heavy armor, you now have a four up armor save. And then on top of it, every time you make an armor save, you uh, make a bonus attack at base strength for head buddy go. Larry, Larry, you can't just oh, lap it. Oh, are you all right? How did Larry? Here, shard of the herdstone horn. So these are talismans and chant items. They have a lot of things that allow them to subtract from people shooting at them. So that's like a gimmick, I suppose you could roll with with the beastman. Uh, to really mess with the shooting army, which is pretty good. Arcane items and banners. I think the banner of outrage is the one I'd like to see the most. And it pretty much just 20 points, you auto pass primal fury test. However, the enemy units gain hatred towards you and the bear that the unit has joined. Not, not too bad, not too good, right? Um, so coming on here, let's talk about some of the mounts. You could take a razor gore chariot or you could take a regular tusker gore chariot. I just threw a chariot up there. And uh, you could put anything that could take. I think only the Gore Bull and the Doom Bull could not take chariots, but the Brace Shaman, Great Brace Shaman, Beast Lord, and War Gore could all take them. Moving on, unit profiles. So, this is where we get into the meat and potatoes of the army, and this is what I want to see how they're going to do moving forward. We're going to look at the core, special, rare, see if when the army drops, if everything stayed the same what changed now uh it's pretty self-explanatory we talk about this all the time with eighth edition we get up to 25 percent minimum for core up to 50 percent for special and up to 25 percent for rare now that i don't think is going to be the same when we go into the old world at this point they're going to have a different way that they break down their army moving along so we got the gore herd popping off at seven points model you can upgrade for a command element champion and musician champion and standard are 10 points per upgrade the musician is five whatever the champion is the musician will always be divided by two so if it's 12 it's six so um you can upgrade one point per model to give them a shield or an additional hand weapon because they have no armor save i would just give them an additional hand weapon and try to pray that you get double, uh, you get those uh, double ones and frenzy with it. Um, so these guys, I would take these over any of the others. The gores have a little bit more coming in at strength three, but toughness four, and they can kind of take a hit and dish out a hit, which is good. Being strength three, they're not going to be modifying any armor saves, however, so it's interesting. And then also um with the two hand with an additional hand weapon you're looking at two attacks at base on the unit three for the champion not bad and i believe leadership seven leadership eight with the champion so ungor herd i personally don't understand the use of these when you can take the ungor raiders which are bowmen um but again the command for the champion is six so musicians three um five points per model and i'm just really curious how did any of you implement the ungor herd because for me it's hard to understand what the use is unless you take Ungrel Fourhorn, which is a 75 point technically hero, but not hero, and uh, and implement him in the unit. Now, the Beastmen do this really freaking weird thing. I don't know if it's all 7th ed, but you can take a hero choice that's not a hero choice and add it. Like Ungrel Fourhorn, Goros Warhoof, and they have little different benefits to the unit, so I don't know. 
Now we're looking at Uncle Raiders. Uh, BS3, 6 points per model. However, you cannot take a banner, but you can't take a musician and champion for previously established points. And now we're looking at the Tusker Gore Chariot. 80 points of pop. You'll have a best of gore in the back, a gore in the front with a spear, plus one strength on the turn you charge, so strength four. You're going to be breaking that armor. And then I believe the gore has a great weapon, so again, that's nice. Um, you can also replace the best of gore with the hero, as we said, and it would then fall into that slot. So if you put a lord on a chariot, it would now become a lord choice. Chaos Warhounds, we all know what they are. Six points of pop. You can upgrade that poison attack skill. You can six up. However, I think they're best served bare bones, where you can get that extra 12 inch movement after you deploy for being fast cap and kind of harass the enemy right out the gate. Uh, with that being said, we are moving on. Special Minotaurs, Centigors, Harpies, Bestigors, Razor Gore, Chariot, Razor Gore, Herd. Minotaurs were interesting. 55 points of pop, minimum unit of three monstrous infantry, so they were stomping on your soul if you were not also monstrous infantry. Their command was a bit expensive, coming at 20 points of champion and banner, naturally making the musician 10 points. You can take great weapons for, I believe, it was 8 points per model, and then you can take an additional hand weapon or shield for 4 points per model. These dudes were base strength 5, toughness 4, 3 attacks, and 4, four on the champ, and a movement of 6. They also had a little rule called Blood Greed. Now what is Blood Greed, you might ask? Pretty much these dudes like eating people. Whoops. These dudes like eating people. So, every time you won a combat, you would get Frenzy. If you already had Frenzy, you would gain an additional attack. So if you won 4 rounds of combat, and you're kicking butt, you got an extra three attacks and frenzy, technically making it four. However, you can only overrun on a D6 because they would be so preoccupied eating their enemy that they wouldn't want to overrun. And the Centigors are like your alcoholics of the army. Julian! I don't know where I felt like I could get a little drink around here, do you, bud? Uh, you actually have to roll in a chart. For drunken, on a one to two, they're sober and they gain a uh, plus two to their initiative. On a 3 through 4, they have to hang over from hell, which I'm guessing the author did as well. And then uh, you, you can reroll your Prime Fury, however, you're minus 1 to your movement. And then on a 5 or 6, you had Drunken Bravado, which gave them Stubborn. I personally like this, however, I'm an Orc player, so I like the Animosity table. These guys were interesting at Movement 8, Strength 4, Toughness 4. I believe they could exchange their Spear for Great Weapons at 2 points per model. And then again, Goros Warhoof, 155 point hero, but not hero, made these guys core. So that was cool, you could take him as core. And Goros Warhoof on the side, I'll talk about his own lore later in his own video, but he is such a freaking cool model. My favorite model is, in fact, from the Beastman range. Him and Kazak one eye. Uh, Harpies, pretty simple. They have fly, you can have 5 to 10 models in a unit. It's 11 points per model. Strength 3, toughness 3, movement 5 when they're not flying, which is 12 inches. Two attacks. Uh, I would say use them on the flanks if you really wanted to get fancy with it. Bestigors, heavy armor, great weapons, one attack base, 12 points per model, up to 50 points of magical standards, and their upgrades champion was 12, musician 6, standard 12. Um, they could take up to 25 points of Gifts of Chaos on that champion, and again, strength 4, toughness 4, one attack base, two on the champ, great weapons, no messing around. They also had get it a special rule that special rule was called despoilers with the spoilers for any unit they wipe out or cause to flee they steal their banner and what they do is they add plus one to their leadership for every banner they take however if said if they died the enemy counts as picking up their banner but and it's god the razor gore chariot and the razor gore herd are something we can all talk about the chariot has a four up armor save like the tusker gore chariot except this is strength five toughness five but the tusker gore strength five toughness four it packs a best of gore and a gore same kind of loadout except the tusker gore is a mean little bugger movement seven weapon skill three strength five initiative two and four freaking attacks on that bad boy it has Primal Fury, Chariot, Fear, and Thunderous Charge. What's Thunderous Charge, you might add? Pretty similar to the Orcs and Goblins charge on their Warbore. Plus one strength when you successfully charge, only for that round. And then the Razor Gore Herd is just that stat line without the Chariot. And you can have a unit of one. Uh, and I believe you can go up to three, in my opinion, at 50, 50, 55 points of pop. Moving on. 
Saigor, Gorgon, Chaos Spawn, Giant, Jabberside, Chaos Spawn, we'll talk about briefly. Giant, we'll talk about briefly because we've already covered those. And honestly, they're just random fun things you take for fun. Saigor and the Gorgon are both 275 points. However, they differ. The Saigor is pretty much a stone thrower and every chance that it hurls that rock. And it also gets a couple special rules. This dude hates magic. So when fighting wizards, anything with a magical item, undead, or creatures with a ward save, the Saigor may re-roll its fill to hit rolls with Ghost Sight. And then it also had Soul Eater. Enemy wizards within 24 inches of Saigor must take a leadership check. At the beginning of the magic phase, if you fail, no casting for that wizard. Furthermore, any spell the wizard failed to cast results in rolling on the miscast table. So if you're within 24 inches and you mess up rolling that spell, guess what, noob? You're screwed. You're going to have to take that. And you're going to have to re-roll on the miscast table and I'll see if you explode. And in 8th edition, if you rolled Calamitous Detonation on a 1, 2, and 3, you got sucked into the ether and that was it for your wizard. So that's pretty cool. Um, he, he, yeah. So, However, if you dispel the spell, it, nothing happens. It counts as being dispelled. He doesn't explode or anything. Uh, Gorgon, again, it's like the Saigor, but like on the Minotaur version. He don't give a crap about magic, he just wants to eat you. Come here, I'm gonna eat you! I'm bigger than you, I'm higher in the food chain! Get in my belly! Uh, this dude is weapon skill 4, strength 4, T6, wound 6, initiative 3, 6 attacks and leadership 10. He had a couple rules, including blood greed and frenzy. So he already starts with frenzy, he just gets an extra attack for winning. Um, and then he had a couple others called Swallow Hole, pretty self-explanatory. You could get rid of all your attacks, make a single attack, and eat that model. And then on a 4-up to wound, it's a, it's a regular attack. So you still hit on weapon skill, you still hit on top, on strength and toughness. But on a 4-6, to six, you get Killing Blow, meaning he just ate his ass. Now... Why is that important? Because his next rule is strength from flesh. Each time a Gorgon causes a killing blow with its swallow hole, regain D3 lost wounds you've lost. That's not bad. Essentially, you could just keep eating your way to victory, which is, you know, you can't really complain with that. Chaos spawn, 55 points, unit size 1 to 2 for single rare choice. They have 2D6 movements, D6 plus 1 attacks. They're very random. The giant, most of us know, there's a chart for big things, little things, you can trip and fall over, you can not tie your shoes that day. It's really fun, I love them, but I also just play narratively. And now we're moving to the Jabber Scythe. My personal fave, coming in at 275 points, movement 8, can fly, weapon skill 4, blisk of 4, strength 5, toughness 5, 5 wounds, initiative 3, 5 attacks, and leadership 9. Lots of 5s, I dig that. And it also had a couple of special rules which were pretty dope. You had the Aura of Madness. For each unit within 12 inches of the beginning of the Beastman's Magic Phase, must take a leadership test. For every point it fills, there's a wound done to that unit. No armor saves allowed. However, ward saves are fine. If you're immune to psychology, you don't give a crap. So. And then you had the Slithy Tongue, range 12, strength 5. So it's just a little shooting attack. And then Spurting Bile. Every time you cause a wound to the Jabber Scythe, you immediately suffer a strength 5 hit as it spews toxins from its wounds. Pretty interesting, pretty cool. Moving on. Lords and Heroes. We're going to be quick about this. Boom, boom, boom. Now, Lords and Heroes. Name Lords, and we will talk about this all the time. For the Name Lords, they'll get their own respective video in due time. Uh, right now, we got Karazek the One Eye. Kazak the One Eye. Gorthor the Beast Lord, Malagor the Dark Omen, Torox the Brass Bull. They all have very, very interesting uh, lore bits. And it looks like my autocorrect corrected me from Kazrak to Karazet to K. Oh, yeah, no, that's right. Now, named heroes Morgor, Slugtongue, Mooncloth, and a morsel if you had to actually convert on your own. Gorus Warhoof and Ungirl Forhorn. I don't know why they did them the way they did. They did them dirty. I'm just going to say it. They did them dirty. By just making him something you take with the unit. Uh, it would have been nice to see more, more focus on Centigors because I think they're cool. But that's just me. Maybe I'm just, you know, hopeful for the Centigore. Hopefully they bring back something similar. I really liked it. When I think they brought Kragnos out, it seemed like just super Goros Warhoof. But then I found out he wasn't for Beastmen. Slightly dismayed by that. Let's go. Alright, it says here in my notes, I am to ramble. So we got generic lords and heroes. We know what that entails. 
If you're a wizard caster and you're a lord, you start off wizard level 3. You can upgrade to level, wizard level 4 for 35 points. Beast Lord, Doom Bull, Great Bray Shame. You can all take up to 100 points of magical items. I don't know. Uh, you can take the Doom Bull. I personally would just take a Great Bray Shaven and focus on the magic to the lore of beasts. Buff up my units. And then I would move over to my generic heroes. Take a Wargor for a BSB to reroll leadership. And take a little Poopy Bray Shaman. Maybe take the lore of the wild. Try to get that spell for something the Jabber Scythe. And then that way you got just a wonky wizard. You can also package a spell scroll on him and take the things you want on the Great Bray Shaman to make him really, really pop. So that's that. Now let's move on. Summary. In summary. Boom. 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 I like how I cut all that stuff. And then I'm still at 22 minutes here. Where to start? What can you do? Are the Beastmen still around? GW has only added one thing to the range. You can go in the Beast of Chaos for Age of Sigmar. And that one thing is a Beast Lord. So, it's kind of cool you get a Plastic Beast Lord now. Some things are gone, some things are still there. You can build a perfectly viable Old World Beastman army based off the Age of Sigmar Beastman range, considering all of that stuff was around during the Beastman era. Now, um, one thing I would wait is bases are getting redone. If you don't have a 3D printer and you can't print little changes, or you don't want to go through the hassle, that's on you. For me, I'm just going to take my stuff on old bases, glue it on top, cut the, the base down, and just put some sand around it, call it a day. It'll look fine. Um, so there is that. What to expect from the old world? Honestly, everything's up in the air. The addition has changed, which is a good thing. We're all going to have to relearn the play. And I think that the best thing you can do is maintain positivity and just to wait for the army book to come out. And then when it comes out, come back to this channel. Hang out with me while I talk about it, and we compare and contrast. Everybody, sorry to make it so long. Glad to be back. Sorry my voice is hoarse. I'm slowly getting the idea how I want to do these. Um, I'm going to start glossing over a lot of the, the artifacts and stuff like that because they're just not pertinent to what the old world is going to be doing. Everybody, have a wonderful day. I look forward to seeing you on Friday for the Wood Elf video. Take care and peace.